Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ron, and today we're going to be talking about the most popular weapons for Gunner, at least decided by you guys through the votes. I've been holding polls for about the last couple days. Each of these polls have about three to 4,000 votes on them uh, because I left them going a little bit longer, a little bit longer than the driller ones. So first up, we have the primary weapon, and what is the most popular primary weapon? Well, it is the autocannon for Gunner. Coming in at 46%, with a close second being the minigun at 37%, and then in third place, we have the Hurricane at 17%. The primary weapons were the ones that surprised me the least. Um, I figured Auto Cannon would be the most, and I figured Minigun would be a close second. I didn't know how many votes the Hurricane would get, though. I figured it would actually be around 20%. It's a little bit lower than what I thought it would be. A lot of people cited with the Auto Cannon as to why they liked it was it holds a lot of shots, it does really good against crowds. Um, you can put a lot of different mods on it. A lot of people pointed out how good its overclocks are, which is completely true. The Auto Cannon probably has some of the best overclocks in the game. It's, at least in my opinion, the worst overclock it has is the ammo one, where you still get an extra 110 rounds, but that one's like the, the weakest one. So the rest are really good when your worst one is already really good. Second place is the minigun. A lot of people said that they really like the flexibility of the minigun does high damage, it's fun to use, um, it has some pretty good overclocks. It actually has a lot of really good overclocks and some really fun ones too. A lot of people just really loved how bullet hell worked too. Yeah, myself included, I really love that one too, even though it's somewhat inconsistent, it's super fun. And then the Hurricane came in last with not really a whole lot of people saying that the Hurricane was bad or their least favorite. Actually, a lot of people said that they enjoyed it quite a bit, but they cited a couple of things that they maybe didn't like as much. It wasn't quite as easy to use or to get used to as the minigun or the auto cannon, which I think is fair. The hurricane is definitely the most complicated out of those three weapons because the other two are quite simple. Hurricane has a little bit more of a skill ceiling to it. Oh, and uh, another common reason that was cited was a lot of people said that you needed better positioning with the hurricane than you did with the auto cannon or the minigun. I kind of understand that. Um, both of those weapons are more forgiving if bugs just suddenly get on top of you than the hurricane usually um, there could be exceptions to this like if you have salvo module or something like that or if you're running stun on your hurricane if you're running fire then maybe not as much so the winner of the secondaries was definitely the bulldog heavy revolver coming in at 53 percent but then oddly enough the coil gun and the burst pistol came in at the exact same they fluctuated a little bit back and forth in terms of votes for the first couple days, I was really surprised at that, but they both came in at 23%, roughly. That's why you have all these kind of weird numbers here. The main draw that a lot of people pointed out to the revolver is that it has a lot of really good overclocks and a lot of really fun ones, where it has magic bullets, six shooter, elephant rounds, volatile bullets, um, homebrew powder as well. Really only chain hit kind of stands out as like the the odd one out where you don't see it that often. And another good thing to point out about the Bulldog Revolver is that it's really strong without anything on it too. If you just have the base Bulldog Revolver, you got 60 or 65 damage with bonus headshot damage or bonus weak spot damage. So that's more than enough to one shot normal grunts on any difficulty, doesn't matter. Um, you can also body shot web spitters, I believe, on any difficulty with just that too. And you can also easily build it to where you're getting even more headshot damage to where you can one-shot slashers, one-shot spitters. It has really long range. Yeah, I can understand why the, the revolver got the most love out of everything here. Then we move on to the other two. So the burst pistol, a lot of people really liked. A lot of people said that it was fairly um, consistent. It was very flexible. You could put it with just about everything and have it work in some way. A lot of people really like lead spray to have high damage or micro flechettes to just have a bunch of bullets. Experimental rounds was also brought up a couple of times saying that it can hit really nice breakpoints. So a very good straightforward gun that you don't really have to think about and you can kind of throw it on any loadout was what I was generally getting from that. Which, yeah, I completely understand that. And then the coil gun, a lot of people really like the coil gun just for the fun factor of it. Um, as well as it having some really good overclocks like mole being super strong right now. Hellfire also being really strong, especially with the robots. People just love the fact that you can punch through walls and stuff, myself included. I really love that you can do that with this weapon. So even if something runs behind a wall, you can just hammer it <laughs> and don't have to worry about it. Oh, you can also run triple tech chamber and kind of get that weird glitch where you pretty much have constant armor on it. I'm not sure what causes that, but it is kind of cool that you can get it to work that way. And triple tech chamber is also pretty good. So all three of these kind of surprised me. I figured the revolver would be the winning one here. That's not too surprising. I was just really surprised that the coil gun and the burst pistol were equal or very close to pretty much the entire voting time. It seems like 
this is actually pretty well balanced. I think the determining factor in this for a lot of people was the overclocks. And I could kind of see why people would pick the revolver because it has a lot of fun overclocks and it has a lot of good overclocks. So let's move on to the throwables, which this one also surprised me. So the throwables were a lot more consistent than what I thought they'd be. Coming in at 41%, we have the cluster grenades. This one I was honestly surprised at. I figured this one would be the least picked one because I don't see these all too often whenever I hold public lobbies. Sometimes you see them. They're not super uncommon or anything, but I didn't think that they would be the most picked one. Followed then by incinerary grenades, I figured this one would actually be the winner. And then clusters either be second or third, and sticky grenades being last at 24%. So all of them got pretty good amounts of votes. Um, this is a far more equal pie chart than what we had with Driller, where we just had axes taking up 90% of it, and then everybody else picking the other two. I'm glad to see that that shifted quite a bit, and I'm not honestly too surprised that this broke down the way that it did, um, at least in terms of the percentages. I'm just kind of surprised as to which grenades got picked more than others. I figured it would be more incinerary, the most picked, and then maybe clusters, and then maybe stickies, but I guess not. The percentages, I'm not too surprised at because all of Gunner's throwables are kind of the standard grenades that you see in a lot of other games, so they're pretty familiar. Sticky grenades are kind of like Semtex in other games, or plasma grenades in like Halo. Incinerary grenades are just Molotovs from CSGO or any other first person shooter cluster grenades are a little bit different but sometimes you see like bouquet grenades or uh, like multiple exploding grenades too they're not super uncommon so i can't understand clusters they are the most spectacular to watch they're really good at taking care of crowds you can take out big enemies with them uh, they break armor really well incinerator grenades pair well with a lot of gunners primary slash secondaries they clear up hordes quickly they pair well with other classes, like if you have a driller with a sludge pump, it works really well. And the sticky grenade is also pretty solid. It's a very straightforward grenade, but it has a fear on it, so you throw it on an enemy and it scares it away. You can potentially run into issues, though, where you throw it and then it just runs right towards you and then you take part of the grenade damage. That's not the best, but it is a chance. Gunner is a fairly straightforward class, and I think a lot of these pie charts kind of represent that, where everybody kind of just picks whatever is the most preferable to them. Not necessarily that one is better than the other. You could kind of break it down to that just by including overclocks and saying like this one has more more compelling overclocks to take over these other ones, or maybe this one is better on this particular mission. I think that would be completely fair, but it seems like they're all split up fairly equally, and that's pretty interesting. Whereas like when we did Driller, it was split up fairly equally until we got to like the throwables where we just had a landslide with the impact axes, which wasn't surprising at all. Tell me what you thought about this and what your favorites of each of these are and any reasons why you might like them. Thanks everybody for watching this. I really do appreciate it. And special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube, patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this. If you'd like to be a part of it, there are links down in the description as well as there's a join button down below on YouTube. Thanks everybody who does that. It does help out the channel a lot. Uh, I hope to see you guys next time. Take care and bye-bye.